the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. Drifting along, singing a song. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western Theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest today is that great action star of Western Pictures, Johnny Mac Brown. My name is Cotton Teague Clark, and here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Riding down that old Texas trail, riding down that old Texas trail. Oh, my darling, stay home, please don't go on the road, don't go riding down that old Texas trail. tale of a cowboy who's been down that old Texas trail. Oh, I've had a lot of fun, but my Roman days are done, and no more I'll ride that old Texas trail. Riding down that old Texas trail, riding down that old Texas trail. Oh, my darling, stay home, please don't go on the road. Singing and listening to songs and ballads of life on the range used to be a favorite pastime of cowpunchers in the evening after the day's work was over. And much of the history of the American cowboy has been preserved for us in the cowboy songs of today. The bakers of Weber's Bread are proud to bring you many of these songs on the All-Star Western Theater, just as they are proud to keep your community supplied with good Weber's Bread. And Weber's Bread really is good bread, too. Well mixed and well baked, Weber's Bread has that firm, even texture and distinctive flavor that make it blend well with other foods. When you serve Weber's bread for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you know that family and guests alike will enjoy it. Weber's bread is a substantial, enjoyable item at every meal. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread tomorrow. You'll like it. Your favorite stars of the musical West, the Riders of the Purple Sage, return now with one of their new majestic recordings, Chained to a Memory. No difference if we two are far apart, dear. I could never ever love somebody new. Cause there isn't any room inside my heart, dear. While I'm chained to a memory of you. I could never tell another I belong to them All the whispered words of love Would not be true I could never tell another That I long for them Cause I'm chained to a memory of you If the world should end I'd be satisfied Cause you're gone And there is nothing I can do All my dreams and precious hopes Of yesterday have died Cause I'm chained to a memory of you folks waiting any longer for our Western guests. So let's welcome a return visit to your all-star Western theater from one of the greatest Western stars of all time, Monica Graham Pictures famous action star, Johnny Mac Brown. <laughs> our guest star is heard with the writers of the Purple Sage today in a story of the West written especially for him entitled The Marshal of Red Rock.
this is the thriving city of Red Rock, huh? Yeah, it looks mighty peaceful, what there is of it. Yeah, but don't let that fool you. Well, right now, I'm in favor of rustling up something to eat. Oh, me too. I could eat a cow right about now. <laughs> you put all right. Let's quit talking about it. Well, say, let's, let's try this place here. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. Stay there, there, boy. Mike Ryan, Palace of Pleasure, Saloon, Cafe, and Hotel. Yeah, we might get a line on a job in here, too, you know? Yeah, that's for me. You know, the sooner we get to work, the sooner I can return to my normal eating schedule. <laughs> Day, oh, a little food, I reckon. Yeah, then fold in them chairs at the table there. Now, uh, what do you have? Bring us three steak sandwiches and three coffees. A steak sandwich? And that's what I said. Yeah, how you want them fixed? Oh, uh, well done for me. Oh, about medium on mine. Yeah, I just change mine a little on each side. Here, coming right up. Stay on food like this, I ain't going to be strong enough to work when I do find a job. Oh, Dean, quit griping. You're just like my old grandma used to be. You boys mind if I take this extra chair? No, not at all, stranger. Sit down. Much obliged. Been riding a long way and I'm mighty hungry. You stranger around here too, huh? That's right. Just dressing around looking for work. Then you're keeping company with the right people. My name's Dawson. Johnny Dawson. Glad to know you, Johnny. I'm Foy Willing. This is Al Floy and Jimmy Dean. Hi, Hi, Hi fellas. Hey, will you have be having something to eat too there, friend? Yeah. Bring me a big, thick stick and make it rare. And i got to sit here and watch him eat it. Here, and coffee? Yeah, black. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, who does the fellow see about a job around here? Uh, Mike Ryan, your man. Where do we find him? That's him standing right over there. Fellow with a big black hat and a cigar. Thanks. Why don't you ask him to step over here? Well, sure. Hey, Mike, can you step over here a minute? Sure. What do you men want? Thought you might be able to put us next to a job. Punches? Yeah. We're needing work bad. Well, I'm afraid I can't do nothing for you. I ain't in the habit of hiring strangers till they've been around long enough to prove themselves. What kind of proof are you looking for? Proof that you're smart enough to do your work and keep your mouth shut. Well, we can't afford to waste the work. We're about broke, so I reckon we'll just look somewhere else. I can tell you're strangers, all right. What do you mean? You don't look for work in this section from nobody but me. When Mike Ryan don't hire them, they don't get hired. What about the ranchers around here? They do what I tell them to do. Oh. So that's the deal, huh? Yeah, that's the deal, stranger. You either take it or leave it. Yeah. I reckon I can leave it all right, but I still don't have to take it. Yeah, that's too bad. And just in case you're looking for trouble, I can furnish you with plenty of that, too. You handle most every kind of trade around here, huh, Ryan? That's right, and I specialize in troublemaking drifters. Better take it easy, Dawson. And I think we can do business, Ryan. What am I offering? Uh, Pete. Yeah? You and the boy step over here a minute. I'm with you, Mike. I'd like for my customers to get the best of service. What's up, boss? This stranger here don't like the way I operate. Well, now that's too bad. Reckon we ought to explain it to him? Yeah, reckon you better. Because I ain't too bright about such things. Well, it's something like this, stranger. You're supposed to get out of your chair quite like, walk out the door, get on your horse, ride out of town, and never come back. And if I don't? Then it's the duty of me and the boys to throw you out of here and dare you to come back. Now, stranger, which do you like best? What do you fellas think you ought to do, Willie? When you make up your mind, then that's what we think, too. Well, Ryan, I've made up my mind. And which do you choose? I reckon you better have Pete and the boys get to work on it. That's what I'm paying them for. All right, boys. Hey, hey, line up. Line up. The next one of you that reaches for a gun is in trouble. We ain't through with you yet, stranger. You're ain't through, through all right. yet, stranger. You're through tonight. All right, Ryan. Call off your dog. My steak is ready and I'm going to eat it. Well, Drifter, you and your friends did all right. All right, Pete, you boys lay off. All right. Now, after you boys finish eating, come on back to my office and we'll talk about that job. Hank. Here. Yeah. Serve these boys their food and I'll pay the check. All right. Well, what do you know about that? And we ordered a measly little old steak sandwich. Well, looks 
as if you men proved yourself in a hurry. As far as I'm concerned, Ryan, you can get down to business. That goes for us, too. All right, I need men. Good men who ain't particular what kind of work they have to do. And who likes to be well paid for what they do. Before we start uh, talking business, Ryan, let's split the party up. Hmm? What do you mean? I ain't hooked up with these men. Well, that's the way you feel about it, Dalton. Well, then uh, suppose you men wait outside till Ryan and me get through. Come on, boys. I don't think this is for us anyway. That's a fine way to act. Well, from the way you handled yourself as well as your guns, Dawson, it convinces me you're the man I'm in need of. And what is the job? How much does it pay? You're very particular about the kind of work you do? It depends. On what? The pay. Well, I can make that end of the deal plenty interesting. Look, Ryan, let's quit beating around the bush. If you've got money, then pass some of it my way. Then start giving orders. Well, that's the way I like to hear you talk. Now, here's the story. Tomorrow there's a big supply of money arriving on the morning train assigned to the local bank. I think I'm beginning to understand what my job is. Yeah, and before I go any further, are you still interested? How much is it in it then for me? Five thousand. It's a deal. Good. And meet me here at eight o'clock in the morning and we'll make our plans. That's good enough for me. All right. up in that fight, Dawson lost his paper and I picked it up. So he's a United States Marshal. Yeah. No wonder he was anxious to get rid of it. He wanted to work on Ryan by himself. Yeah, I was beginning to think he was giving us a runaround. I wonder if he's discovered losing his identification papers yet. Well, more than likely he has. And his real name is Johnny Phillips. Yeah. Hey, somebody at the door. I wonder who that could be. Who is it? Dawson. That's him now. Let him in, Dean. Okay. Hiya, boys. I wanted to talk to you with, uh, for a minute. Sure, Dawson. Come right in. Sit down. Sit down. Much obliged. You know, I got the figuring that you boys might be a little sore at me on account of the way I acted over at Ryan's office. Oh, that was all right. Philip? Philip? What are you talking about? Thought maybe you might need this piece of paper here, just in case you was called on to identify yourself. Where did you get that? You lost it in that fight we got mixed up in. Well... I reckon that's that. Look, Dawson, you don't have to worry about us. No, in fact, you can count on us to help if you think we'd be any help. Well, after seeing you in action, I might find you right handy. Now, if it ain't talking out of school too much, what's going on with this Ryan fella? Plenty. He's the very man that headquarters sent me down here to investigate. And I'm getting all the information I need right from him. And how can we help? Well, I, I don't know yet. But if you're around tomorrow morning, I may call on you. In the meantime, one of you could uh, keep my identification papers on you, because if it's found on me, then my plans are shot. <laughs> and so am I. Here, let me have them. I'll plant that piece of paper where nobody can find it. Just call on old Floyd when you need it, huh? <laughs> met most of these men last night, huh? Yeah. We got pretty well acquainted. Uh, no hard feelings about that fight, huh? No, no, no. Think nothing of it, though. All right, men, let's get down to business. Uh, that's what I'm here for, Ryan. What's your plan? This is it. Now, everybody listen carefully. Pete, you, Clint, and Buck will go into Snyder's feed store next door to the bank at 2 o'clock. Just before 3 o'clock, you'll come out the side door of Snyder's wearing masks. Go up the narrow alley and into the bank. Jim Turner, the bank clerk, will have everything ready for you. When you get the money, light out for the hiding place and come back to town through the hills. Now, is that clear? Yeah, we got that. Yeah. Sure, sure. Looks like you've been working on this plan a long time, Ryan. Well, I haven't missed a bet. It wasn't easy setting that bank clerk and old man Snyder. No. This all sounds mighty good, except... Uh... Except what? Just where do I fit in? And what do I do? Well, you're the key figure, Dawson. Being a stranger here, you're going to have to leave town pronto after this is all over. But uh, with $5,000 in your pocket. And uh, here it is. Thanks, Ryan. I like the way you do business. 
Now, listen. You ought to be sitting on your horse directly in front of the bank, unmasked. And you plug the first man that tries to interfere. When the men ride to the hills, you ride with them. There, you'll part company and you can be on your way. Five thousand dollars richer. It's a deal, Ryan. All right. See you later. So long. You can depend on me. Now, look, boss, how are we going to frame this guy, Dawson? <laughs> That's all cared for. Joe Morgan is going to cut the cinch on his saddle, so when he starts to make a getaway, he's going to land on his neck in the middle of the street. <laughs> in the meantime, Joe has gone to those three men who got mixed up in the fight with Dawson last night and send them out on a funny job clue. Then they're going to be strung up as the three bank robbers. <laughs> you know, boss, this is the smartest setup you ever planned. <laughs> I want you men to walk into Mike Ryan's place and stay there until I get back. Hmm. That's funny. Some fellow by the name of Joe Martin just came by and told us to be at his ranch east of town at 3 o'clock for a job. Uh, what did you run across this Joe Morgan? That's the strange part of it. We didn't. He just came calling on us with the offer of a job. You know, it don't make sense. It makes mighty good sense. I don't get you. That's also uh, some of Ryan's doing. If my guess ain't wrong... He plans to have a posse ride out and pick you three up and accuse you of having busted a bank. No, that ain't for me. So busting a bank is part of the deal. That's right. And I'm going to take part in it. Just before 3 o'clock, we take the bank's money and head for Ryan's hideout. As soon as I find out where they've been keeping all their loot, I'm coming back to Red Rock with the three prisoners and the money. Then what do you want us to do? Uh, Just to leave Red Rock. It might be hard to explain later on. You can count on us, Johnny. Good. Then I'll see you later. You know that fellow knows his business. Well, you have to know the law business to be in it and live. Let's go. We've got to be seen about town. Oh, boy, my foot sure does hurt. Must be going to rain or something. You and your foot. All set, Pete. Let's go. Let's start firing them guns, men. Scare the daylights out of everybody. Dawson making his getaway with him. He knows what he's doing. You he can bet on that. Hey, look, his saddle's come off. He hit the ground. Hey, this don't look good. There goes one of them. Hey, Come on, we better get over to Ryan's place quick. Let's go. Now, take it easy. My foot's a killer. You and your big fat foot. My guess was right. They're bringing him in here. Well, I don't see Ryan about him. You can bet he'll make his appearance at the right time. All right, stranger, fall into that chair. You're about to do a lot of coke. Friend, you don't know the half of it. Don't do anything, boy. Just stand by and watch a while. Yeah. Sam, where's Ryan? Well, he took off with a posse of men. Said he was going to bring them three bank busters back for a hangout. Yeah, good for Mike. Mike. Yeah. Ryan thinks he's going to pick us up. You. And he figures these men will hang Dawson before he gets back. Well, all right, puncher. Start talking, because you ain't got much time left. All right. I'm ready to talk. I didn't figure on my saddle and me leaving my horse on the getaway. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I, I would have been back here with the other three men, grabbed the fourth, and by tomorrow morning be heading into headquarters with them. What do you mean by headquarters? I'm United States Marshal, hmm? Johnny Phillips. Hey, we said you clean and all we found was 5000 of the bank's money. Where's your identification? Yeah, yeah, where is my it? Friend, my friend standing right over there has my papers. Boys, come over here. All right, Johnny. Hey, one of you men got proof that this man is a marshal? You just yeah. ain't a wolfing friend. Right here, right here in my pocket. Here, yeah, give it to me. Uh, it. It's in one of these pockets. Uh, had it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't lost it. I think the start of a... You better look fast and think hard, boy, if you know what's good for you. 
Oh, my foot's been hurting so bad, I just can't think. I just plain forgot where I hit it now. You and that big, fat foot of yours. Well, if you don't hand them papers over in one minute, stranger, then we spring you three with this one. No, no, this is all go minute. We ain't done nothing. Well, you're friends of this man, and he's guilty of robbing a bank right now. And that's enough for us. Get the rope, three, boys. We need three extra loops. Now, hold on. Hold on just a minute. This man is a marshal. You got our word for that. Why, your word ain't no good, uh, stranger. We want the proof. I know I got that paper on me somewhere. Then you'd better come up with it, Chloe, or forever hold your peace. He says his foot hurts him, boys. Let's stop the pain. Yeah, yeah. Come on, we can't stall around here no longer, boys. You got the ropes, Tom? Boys, 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 think hard. These men mean business. Yeah, I think for me, too. I don't want to hang. All right, boys, let's go with it. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. I got it. I know where it is. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, it's in my boots. That's where well, that's what's been making my hurt. My foot hurts so much. Wait a minute. Yeah, I remember. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you, it. Look. Gosh. All right, men. Look this over. Yeah, wait a minute here now. Johnny Phillips, United States Marshal. And your picture's printed on it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Marshal, looks like this is you all right, but there's a lot of clearing up to do yet. Yeah. That's right. And I've got the answer to it all. Everybody just sit tight, and in a few minutes, Mike Ryan will return with the... The three men who got away. Good for Mike Ryan. Yeah, yeah, but how do you know him and his posse will catch you? He's, he's not going to catch the men he's after because they are here. My three friends there. But he's going to bring, bring back three more with him. And uh, they're the men you want. Yeah, well, Marshal. I hope you know what you're talking about. Otherwise, this is still going to look mighty bad for you, even if you have proved your identity. Yeah. I know, yeah. but uh, don't worry about that. And in the meantime, with uh, them not knowing uh, they were sent for, uh, see to it that the bank clerk, Turner, and the feed store man named Snyder are present when Mike and his men get here. Willing? You three boys stand by. We're ready, Johnny. Well, well how are you all going to do? Sit here and wait? <laughs> Here comes Ryan up in front now, but ain't no bandits with him, just Pete and Quentin Buck. Well, what do you say to that, Marshal? That's just fine. Now, remember when they come, uh, don't reveal my identity. Mr. Turner and Mr. Snyder, you two are our only witnesses. Well, Snyder, can you identify anybody? Can you, Turner? No, me neither. Well, that will take care of itself. Well, man, I reckon they got away. At least they give us a slip for the time being. That's too bad, Ryan. Yeah. Looks as if you're going to hang by yourself, stranger. I don't think there'll be any hanging, Ryan. At least not in Red Rock. Uh, what do you mean? I mean you're under arrest, huh? Ryan. What? You and your three men here. Now, up with, up with them. All of you boys. Keep them covered. Well, well, what's the meaning of this? Uh, as a United States Marshal, I arrest you and your men for robbing the Red Rock oh, Bank. Yeah, yeah. That's right, Ryan. He is a, a marshal. But I think he's made a mistake about you and the boy. Well, there's no mistake. And if Turner and Snyder don't start talking fast, they're going to be found just as guilty as you men. Oh, I had nothing to do with this. Oh, yes, you did, Turner. And so did I. I didn't want to get mixed up in this business, but I'm ready to make a clean breast of things. Hey, shut up, you fool. I ain't going to shut up. They're your men, Marshal. And so is Turner here. He's in with them, too. Ryan forced me into this business because I was so deep in debt to him. All right, Ryan. You boys are going back to the headquarters. You've been running loose too long. Uh, you, you can't get away with this. Uh, shut up or I'll knock your cotton pig and head off with my boots. Well, Johnny, that was a pretty close call back there. Yeah, but when that saddle and me came off of that horse, things looked mighty cloudy. Yeah, I reckon it was me that saved the day by finding the marshal's papers in the next time, though. <laughs> yeah, and we all came near being hanged while you was looking for them. Well, I always say better late than never. <laughs> well, boys, this is where I leave you. All right, Johnny. I sure was happy to meet you. Now, thanks a lot, and so long, and best of luck to you. Thank 
Thank you, Johnny Mac Brown. Heard with our guests on today's story were Eddie Fields as Mike Ryan, Franklin Pinky Parker, Eddie Kirk, Hank Caldwell, and Johnny Paul. Boy Willing, Al Slow, and Jimmy Dean, the riders of the Purple Sage, as themselves. And here they are again, riding your way with a song. <laughs> Following the sun ever since the day begun, and we're weary. Keep a moving, keep a moving, till the fading western light brings the shelter of the night so dreary. Keep a moving, keep a moving, following the sun all day. In the early days of the great cattle spread, the cowpuncher was a busy gent. His work was hard, his hours were long, and his pay was small. But he didn't mind as long as the ranch was congenial and the food was good. Well, Westerners today are traditionally congenial, and they still like good food, too. That's why Weber's bread is such a popular loaf, because Weber's is good food. It's a well-mixed, well-baked loaf that appeals to the eye and satisfies the appetite. Weber's bread has a firm, even texture, a golden brown crust, and a distinctive flavor all its own. Served sliced with dinner meals, combined with your favorite sandwich spread, or toasted for breakfast in the morning, Weber's bread really hits the spot. Buy Weber's bread. Your entire family will like it. Look for it at your grocer's in the familiar blue gingham wrapper. Now here comes Four Willing back to the microphone with our guest star, Johnny Mac Brown. <laughs> Johnny, I know that all the folks have received a big thrill having their favorite Western star in our Western Corral today. Well, thank you, Foy. And believe me, it's a pleasure to keep company with folks here at the Western Theater as well as the folks listening. And we hope you'll come back to see us again real soon. Well, you bet your bottom dollar I will. <laughs> Here they are, men of the West from out of the West with the real song of the West. The riders of the Purple Sage sing the title song of their latest Republic all-color picture, Out California Way. Made up my mind to go away. I'm always gonna stay. I lay a bet you know where. I California Way. I want to wear my Levi. And lay around all day My life I'm gonna revive A California way Got a tin gun set and a guitar Took a lesson, got a cowboy bell Now I sing mighty whistle Got a pearl and a pencil and a craven For the west the sun will soon correct me I hit the old high So partner just address me A California way A California way From Hollywood you've heard your all-star Western theater A BM Bear production starring America's great Western singers Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple State our guest star today was Johnny Mac Brown. My name is Cotton C. Clark. This program came to you from Columbia Square.
K.N. Expos Angeles.